<coughs> hello, 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 hello. Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? I think we are live. Hello. Hey, guys. How are you all? So, just as a forewarning, I have been sick this entire week. So, if I go off into a coughing fit, I mean, I have tried to take medication and my body just does not listen. So, just letting y'all know right now <laughs> that that might happen. So, yeah, excuse me if I'm like clearing my throat and stuff. Hi, Kiel. Hi, Rahana. Hey, Mesh. Good to see you guys. Hey, Lily. Hey, Nyanko. Nyanko? Nyanko? Oh, guys, I'm like the worst name pronouncer out there. <clears throat> what have you all been up to this week? I will give you a really quick breakdown about my week uh, before we launch into things, especially as we wait for more people to join in on our conversation today, which is basically about analyzing argument, but part two, because we didn't get through enough last time, you know, and it's a... It's a section of English that a lot of people struggle with, so, mm -hmm. um, This week, um, ooh, okay, so I finally went to my Young Achievers Award um, during the weekend, so I'm actually going to release a vlog on this channel very shortly, so I'm so excited. There's a few extra videos coming out soon, so, ooh, I am, I try not to give too much away. Um, <clears throat> what else did I do this week? So I was sick the entire week, which meant that I didn't actually do that much. Um, just slept and worked and slept and worked. But I discovered a really nice Indian restaurant near my house. So I've been getting all these curries for lunch lately. And it's like an Indian Malay um, restaurant. So they do like Teh Tariks there. Oh, which I love. Do you guys... Do you guys know what Teh Tariks are or are you Malaysian, Indian or have you had one before? They're just, they're delicious. I love them. Um, food really makes my day. So the fact that I've been sick but I've been able to enjoy good food has been definitely very heartwarming for me. Um, <clears throat> and yeah. I guess there have been other things happening, but I feel like I can't tell you right now. But I will tell you in the videos coming up really soon. So, hey Kayla, hey Kitsumi, um, hey NBA, NBA fan, hi. <laughs> I'm going to tell you guys what's happening during this live stream. So, on our agenda, one. I'm obviously going to answer your questions. Awesome. I had a few questions come in through my newsletter, so I'm going to answer those first. And then I'm going to answer any questions that you guys are asking me right now. Two, I am going to announce the 20,000 subscriber competition. Uh, when I So I basically did a video last week, um, all the week, sorry, two weeks ago, <clears throat> announcing my new ebook and the second edition um, of the ultimate English study guide, the new and improved. So I'm giving away three of those to three lucky of your people. I've already um, picked the winners. So <laughs> um, <clears throat> we'll be going through those. And then I am going to go through uh, more questions and then there's going to be a special gift for all of you um, just, just, just a little, little something, a little bit of love that I'm going to give you. And then that's going to be about it. <clears throat> I am seeing one of my students straight after this live stream. So it's probably not going to be a super long one. Um, it's just one of my private tutoring students. So, yes. Um, <clears throat> so guys, feel free to start asking any of your questions and I will get to them. Um, try to ask questions about analyzing argument if possible, because that's what this topic is about today. 
Um, if you have any other questions about anything else, then it's usually best to ask me via my newsletter. So if you aren't subscribed, just go into the description box below. You can subscribe there and ask questions and I answer questions um, on the first week of every month. <clears throat> I had quite a few questions about structuring language analysis, forward slash analyzing argument. And I had a question from Gemma, I had a question from Zoe, and they asked, I'd love to learn more about structuring and language analysis and which structure is helpful in achieving those high grades. Zoe's in year 10 and she says, how do I structure um, a a two paragraph? I don't know. Sometimes when you when you guys send your questions through, I don't know if they're like typos or maybe they're just not enough details for me. But I'm going to assume just like if I tell you about um, essay structures for analyzing arguments, then it's going to answer your question. So um, I'm definitely going to do a full video on this at some point in time. But because I know a lot of you have your sack very soon, I will just um, go ahead and ask you, oh sorry, go ahead and tell you today. So basically um, I, I thought I needed a whiteboard for this because I, I just don't think it's going to work any other way. Okay, let's see how this is going to work. Um, basically when it comes to analyzing argument, there's like three main ways you can go and approach your essay. The first way is, can you see this? One second. Um, a little bit better. The first way is basically something called block your block method, right? So a block method is basically when you have um, paragraph one come first, sorry, oh, um, your first article in the first body paragraph. Oh man, why, why are these so bad? I didn't realize it would reflect the light. That's my bad. First article is your first body paragraph. I'm sorry. I tested that marker before and it seemed okay. But now it doesn't seem quite as okay as I imagined. And that's my fault. Let's try this color. Second article, second body paragraph, and then like let's just say if you've got three articles, then it's just in like third article, third body paragraph, and then the last one is your comparative. That's basically like your last paragraph when you take some time to compare the first two. So that's called a block because you're doing them all in chunks. Let me forward, yeah? Cool. Ask me questions if you, as we go. <laughs> Mesh is like, thanks Lisa, I was just about to ask you the format of an essay. No problems, guys. No problemo. So that's block, right? Um, block is not my favorite. Because with block, um, I think the worst thing is if you run out of time, the thing that you're going to end up sacrificing and the thing that you're not going to be able to get to, most likely, is that last paragraph, which is your comparative. And especially for your SAC, if it's very important to have your own 
comparative part, right? Then I think you're not going to score as many marks because you've just missed out on that entire section. So we want to mitigate that risk by approaching it in other ways. Okay, so the second way is a fully integrated approach. Okay. Integrated. So with integrated, sorry, I'm just like, you can tell I haven't done this before. <laughs> with integrated, basically every single body paragraph, first body paragraph, second body paragraph, third body paragraph, how many paragraphs you want, right? Every single one of them is a comparative paragraph, etc., etc., which basically means that you're comparing all your articles in every single body paragraph. So if you've got two, two, two articles, you're comparing both of those, three articles, you're comparing both of those, and maybe you're structuring each paragraph according to different ideas. Am I a fan of this one? No. Um, I just think it's like unnecessarily hard, to be fair. Okay. So then my third one, which is my third and personal favorite, bridge, bridge. Okay. Mm. Um, bridge. Okay, so what happens here is um, the first part of your essay, okay, let's say that first body paragraph might be about article one, okay? Um, then your second body paragraph is going to be a comparison. Between article one and two. Then your third will be article two. Oops. Okay. All right. Let me explain. There are exceptions to this as well. So. When I say your first body paragraph, I really mean you spend the first section of your essay talking about article one. So this might actually mean one body paragraph, it might mean two body paragraphs. Um, that's really dependent on how many ideas you extract from the actual article and how long it is. So if it's like a super short article, you're not gonna be able to write that much about it. So you might only have one body paragraph. But if it's a really long one, like it's an A4 sheet, then you might have two paragraphs dedicated to article one. So this structure is definitely flexible and it should be flexible to fit in with exactly what's happening for you. Okay, so don't think that this is like dead set because it's not. Then as you transition um, out of article one, you're in the middle of your essay, you're gonna have a comparison between article one and article two. So basically this is why this thing is called a bridge because this bridges your discussion between article one and article two. It's like a nice kind of, oh, we're slowly moving into article two. Then once you've made a few comparisons in the last part of your essay, um, you can spend time talking about article two on its own. The reason why I like this method is because it mitigates the risk of you um, potentially not talking about the comparison at all if you leave the comparison to last. This way you're doing it in the middle and you get it over and done with, right? And it's also a smooth transition. Like to me, this makes a lot of sense because it flows. Um, you're not just kind of like jumping from article one to article two and then doing a comparison. Like you're naturally progressing through your discussion. Um, so yeah, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, good luck for your sack, Andy. Got a sack this Wednesday. Um, so this is like 
this is only for if it's comparative. What if it's like three paragraphs, right? So if it's three paragraphs, you just kind of like extend it a little bit more. This is still the same, okay? But you, you tend to have more body paragraphs when you are doing three articles. Comparison between article one and three and two and three okay Oops. sorry i'm just like trying to trying to move it out of the light for you guys and then so this is basically like what's left over you've already compared one and two so now you're just going to compare one and three and two and three and then fifth body paragraph is article three like that okay so yeah, like I personally try to keep the structure as simple as possible so that I can focus on what's important, which is the actual development of the ideas and analyzing how it persuades, right? Um, let me know if you have any follow-on questions. Um, cool. So, moving on. Um... Zoe's extra question was, um, what happens if I have a longer analyzing argument response? So I feel like I might have kind of answered this already as I explained. But basically, um, again, if let's just say article one is a really long one, then you might just spend more paragraphs on it. That's it. Um, I explained in my previous live stream that I like to base my paragraphs according to ideas that are generated from the article. So this actually moves into a follow-on question by um, <laughs> NBA Fan Pie says, how do you identify arguments within the author's, uh, author's article? So I can't really, I can't, I can't remember if I explained this already in the previous live stream. So please bear with me if I did. Um, basically, a, a easy way to do it is try to understand who the stakeholders are. So stakeholders are essentially anybody who is interested in, ha has an interest in the issue at hand. So if it's, um, talking about releasing chickens um, from cages because farmers are treating them poorly, then you might have the interest from the public, the farmers, um, the people who sell the chickens, people who eat, you know, chicken eggs um, as part of their diet. And by understanding what their reaction would be to this issue, I feel like that's a really good way for you to kind of link that to an argument that the author is making. So, yeah, I'm not sure if that's, like, if you completely understand that because I'm not giving you, like, a specific example. But if not, let me know and I'll do a video on it. Hi, Susanna. Mm. Okay. Sorry, I'm just trying to read what you guys are saying. Okay. Um, Ashley says, what's the best way to approach argument analysis for an illustration or cartoon? Um, try to embed it into your body paragraphs. So if the cartoon shares like a main idea or argument, that the author is making connected into the written parts of the article. I don't believe you should have um, an article just based on the visual analysis on its own because that way I feel like you're not really showing that you understand that the visual is connected to the article and it's there for a reason, you know? 
cute. Okay. Who, who's been addicted to Ariana Grande's No Tears Left to Cry? Because I have been. Even though the first time I heard it, I was like, eh, meh. Now it's in my head all the time. Hi, Amaya. Okay. Cool. You guys are asking me a lot of questions, but unfortunately some of them are kind of irrelevant to this topic today. So remember, just ask through the live, oh, sorry, the newsletter. Okay. So I am now going to announce the three winners uh, for the giveaway. Da -da -da. Drum roll. <laughs> okay, so thank you to everybody who joined in to the giveaway and participated. Um, I really loved seeing what you guys wrote and you know, I wish I could give away this book to all of you, um, but unfortunately I cannot. But that's why I have a special gift for you afterwards. Um, so the three winners are Ashley Collett. And I know that you're watching this live stream right now, so congratulations. Um, she wrote, I'm most looking forward to reading comprehensive breakdowns of sample work. I often read through pieces that are considered to be high standard without actually understanding why they are. So I think this ebook will definitely help you with that because we've annotated them all. So congratulations. Second person is Tara Keshavarez. I'm so sorry again if I cannot pronounce that properly. She wrote, I'm looking forward to the comparison between high scoring and low scoring essays so I can understand what to do and what to avoid. So dead set, you're absolutely gonna get that. Um, because we have so many comparisons between low and high, so congratulations. Third and lucky last is Nikhil, who I also believe is currently watching. So, um, uh, what did you say, Nikhil? You said, um, I'm hoping to gain an insight on English that extends beyond the classroom. Since I've been watching your videos, my confidence in English has become much stronger. Uh, with these notes, I can even build this foundation to a far greater spectrum. I am excited to see a range of things such as reading, comparing, oh, is my favourite, analysing argument. I love analysing argument too. Thank you for being an amazing support. Thank you for supporting me. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, so if you guys did win, then please just email me. My email is in the description box below. If you did not... Do not fret. I am thinking about all of you. So, like I said, I can't give away all of the books for free. But at the very least, what I can do is give you guys a discount. So, I have a $10 coupon for all of you. And so, if you go and check out um, anytime um, from now until the end of next week, um, I'll put in the solid date afterwards, then you get 20, uh, sorry, 10, 20, where did that come from? Um, $10 off um, the book, so it'll go down to $39. So um, the coupon is LSG subscriber, because that's what you are, and yeah, um, I recommend you use that before the coupon kind of runs out. So thank you again so much for supporting, guys. I Really, um, it, it means a lot to me. And um, basically, this coupon is for my shop, which is um, which means you'll get the ebook. Um, but if you guys are wanting a hard copy, then you'll need to purchase that through Lilydale Books, who I have an exclusive contract with to um, sell my books through them. So yeah, um, <sighs> that's all. That's all for now. Okay, let's go, let's go back to some more questions. So, um, um, can't stop now. Do, 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 do. Oh, wow, that was terrible. Um, oh, Susanna says, I've been doing well in my language analysis. Thanks to you, it changed my life. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Look, 
language analysis or analyzing argument is honestly my favorite part of the course. Um, I feel like for me, it took such a long time for me to actually get how to do it. And when it clicked, like I, I still remember that feeling when it clicked. And, you know, to this day, I want the same thing for you guys. And every time I teach a student, whether it's privately, one-on-one or through workshops or live streams like this, I just know like when I see those brightened eyes and like students just get it, I'm like, hell yeah, you got it. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, Mesh says, uh, Lisa, is it okay to have more than four body paragraphs? Look, you don't have to worry about um, the number of body paragraphs. Um, I think what's most important is like the fact that each body paragraph is a different idea and that you, they're important ideas you want to talk about, you know. So some people might have three body paragraphs for analyzing argument. Some people might have five and it, it doesn't matter. Obviously the three are going to be longer, five are going to be shorter, but I think it's just whatever works for you. Quality, not quantity. Huh? Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm also asked, do you know the sheepist implication? How do you integrate that into paragraphs? Honestly, no, I don't. Um, I don't really know what that stands for. So if you want to share it with us, feel free to. I think that everybody learns like different acronyms from um, different schools. Like there's, uh, there's like a pit, there's ABC, there's TEA, there's TEE, there's XYZ, and now there's sheeps. So um, really at the end of the day, you just need three main things, yeah? And it doesn't matter like which um, formula you adopt as long as you just cover these three things. Language technique, evidence for it, how does it persuade the reader? Simple as that. So just work with whatever um, acronym uh, like you understand best, you know? Okay. What's the difference? Soraya says, what's the difference between analyzing and language analysis? Nothing. Um, well, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of difference, but like language analysis was the old syllabus and now with the new English syllabus, they call it analyzing argument. But, you know, a lot of us like teachers are still used to calling it language analysis. I'm still used to calling it language analysis. So I have to like, like stop myself uh, whenever I say it. And then I'm like, oh, it's an analyzing argument. So yeah, they're, they're just used interchangeably at the moment. But I think as the years go by, like probably more and more people will say analyzing argument. Uh, Exley's like, it's Friday night and I'm essentially doing English homework. I could be playing Fortnite. Mm-hmm, I know. It is Friday night and I could be out there partying. I don't know. But here I am with you guys. <laughs> no, but I want to be here, so maybe that's the difference between us two. <laughs> um, okay. Um. Oh, okay. So this took me a little bit of time to read. So Tatiana says, do you recommend doing body paragraphs on ideas themselves rather than about, rather than writing each text individually and then linking at the end and then writing about the second piece? So, um, I just want to clarify, just because you write, you focus your paragraphs according to ideas, um, these two things are not mutually exclusive. It doesn't mean that you don't spend time talking about one article at a time. So if I go back to this,
if I go back to this, right, article one is going to have, let's just say article one is a big one, okay? Um, and it might have like two different arguments in that one article that you want to talk about. So an article has a big overall contention, but within that contention, they have little arguments to basically hold up that overall contention, right? So what you might do is Not even cool. Okay, so this is getting a little bit messy now. If your first article is quite long and there's lots to talk about, then there might be one argument that you want to talk about and a second argument, right? But you're going to split them up into the first body paragraph and the second body paragraph. But they're both going to be article one. Does that make sense? And then once you've talked about both of those, you move into comparisons and then article two. Article two might be the same, you know, like maybe article two, you've got lots to talk about. So you might have... I hope this is okay for you guys. I feel like normally when I write this out, I kind of write it out in a much clearer way, but being that this is live, I think I'm a little like, so it kind of looks, oh Jesus. Um, so it kind of looks like this, yeah? So, whoa. <laughs> okay, so, you can see article two, I've broken it up into argument one and argument two, but they're both in separate paragraphs. So in this case, you know how I was asked before how many paragraphs you can have? This would essentially be a six paragraph essay. But this is like, yeah, this is definitely more on the extra end, you know, like, do you tend to have more than six? No, oh, no. I wouldn't go much, but much more than that because then your body paragraphs are going to be super short because you only have one hour essentially to write up all this stuff. So, yeah. Hey, Will. Susanna says, one of my weaknesses in essay writing is writing really long sentences. How do you avoid writing long sentences? Girl, the answer's simple. Stop doing it. Stop writing long sentences. That's it. Um, you know, sometimes I find that when you are writing long sentences and it's super convoluted, just take a step back and don't be afraid to have shorter sentences. Like, it's not a bad thing to have a short sentence. Quality over quantity. Do you know what I mean? Um, but practice being concise, read out loud, try to understand whether or not you can get rid of little words that you don't necessarily need. And potentially it's a matter of improving your vocabulary so that instead of saying something in five words, you can say it in one word. So I've done a few videos on vocab. Um, so just, you know, search it up on my channel. Good luck. Okay, so Kayla asks, um, how can I go into more depth with my paragraphs rather than just copying the article's information? Great question. A lot of people struggle with it. Um, I think, wow, what's a, what's a really concise way and clear way for me to articulate this? Um, so a lot of students tend to like quote 
what's there and then they'll just explain what the article is talking about and you have to be really um, strict on yourself not to do that um, one way that I ensure that I am saying something new is saying something that is more reading between the lines so what is not already in front of your face okay um, should I give you an example okay let's just say for example um, there's this sentence here okay ha unhappiness is endemic in affluent societies now endemic means um, like disease um, it's like spreading it's not good for you so essentially this article is about like how you can't just focus on money to make you happy um, and it's saying that in rich societies um, unhappiness still exists despite us having lots of money right so rather than you just saying um, the word like the word endemic shows how um, unhappiness is something that's still present in rich societies and therefore uh, readers should steer away from believing that money brings happiness because that's already just repeating what I already know like I read the article too you know so I don't need you to tell me that but something more insightful is to say the word endemic is um, it likens unhappiness to a disease as though it's something that is spreading and something that is um, spreading and oh I just had it and then I was like it just flew away um, it's a disease that people uh, people are struggling with and therefore encourages readers to steer away from believing that money um, can you buy you happiness because you may also um, end up suffering from this disease does that make sense so like that is something that I interpreted myself it's something unique that came to my head and I thought okay how could I explain this in a way that isn't already just in your face so hopefully that helps. <coughs> oh no, I'm coughing, guys. Oh. Okay. Um, Ralian says, how can I talk about language techniques by trying to avoid like stating them? So if you've been told not to, um, write down no, not to state language techniques um, a really good way but it's a more advanced way is just steer away from like your typical um, language techniques that are in all of those lists so inclusive language rhetorical question alliteration um, because with the example that I just used then, you know, like I just said the word endemic and then I it described what endemic meant and how that affected the reader. And that didn't, I didn't like label it anything in particular. So I think you stop stating language techniques naturally as you get more and more advanced and you don't rely on the fundamentals like stats and rhetorical questions so if you are somebody who relies on rhetorical questions for example you know don't just say oh this is a rhetorical question um, it asks a question where the answer is really obvious and so readers are expected to agree with the author because the answer is obvious like that's that's so general and you could say that in every single article you come across so it is no longer unique it's no longer a genuine interpretation of the article that's in front of you so instead of just going oh look it's a question at the end of that sentence I'm just gonna say rhetorical question actually look at what the question is asking you so 
Um, okay, so in this one, right, there's this is the one about how there's more to happiness than money. And then it says, um, where can one find lasting happiness? Question mark. Is it found in good health? Question mark. So rather than me saying, oh, you know, it's a rhetorical question, blah, blah, blah. What I'm going to say instead is the idea of good health as, <coughs> oh my God, I'm so sorry, guys. Um, <coughs> um, the idea of good health is something that everyone desires and something that is not as transient or temporary as just short-term happiness brought by money. Like good health is something that can last the entire lifetime and it's something that's a lot more valuable for people and so readers are more likely to um, agree with that idea that money does not bring happiness. You see what I mean? Like you could go down two different, two very different paths and one path is clearly much better than the other. Mar Marty says, Melbourne's weather got you. Yes, I know. But also um, because I went out last weekend and I went to the awards night, uh, which will be in my vlog, I think I just like, <clears throat> I celebrated a little bit too hard and did not get enough sleep. So I blame me for a lot of that. <laughs> um, okay. So Umut says, I tried the integrated approach, but my teacher said to use the block approach. Her reasoning is it's easier to identify arguments in an exam situation and examiners find that easier to follow. Look, I think it's totally up to you guys, like which one you prefer. Um, <clears throat> I think that as educators, like whether it's your teacher, your tutor, me, or like whoever else you've talked to, um, if you know, you're, you're going to hear lots of different opinions about all the different essay structures. And I think at the end of the day, the best thing for you to do is get exposed to all the different ones out there, but decide which one works best for you. So try them all, but find out which one's easiest for you. Like, okay, your teacher's reasoning is that it's easier to identify arguments, but is it for you? You know what I mean? And if it's not for you, well, then maybe you want to go something else. If it is, sweet, do what your teacher says. Um, but I think at the end of the day, you kind of make the decision. And I, I totally support that. Like, I don't shove anything down my students' students' throats. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, cute. I do say though, this is stuff, just an extra tip for you guys. And I think I might've said this before, like I say this to all my students, just do what your teacher wants of you for your sack. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> because they are essentially grading you. So I think if you uh, do it their way, um, especially if they're a bit more strict and a bit more pedantic about wanting it a certain way, then yeah, do that. And then like, you know, apart from that, it's all free. From there, you choose how you want to do it for your exam. <coughs> okay. Okay, fam. Um, you guys have so many questions. It's amazing. Um, okay, this is going to be my last question. And because unfortunately, I have to go. Sorry, guys. And I can feel another coughing fit coming real soon. And my student's coming too. So, <coughs> um. Will ask, should you ever start a sentence with a quote, then go into analysis, or vice versa? Whatever. Like, um, the best essays tend to um, have a combination of different sentence structures. You don't just want to do the same thing over and over again because it's going to seem a bit formulaic. <clears throat> and it's just going to be boring over time. So feel free to, like, mix it around, okay? Thanks, guys, for being here. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Let me tell you a couple of really interesting things. I'm going to release a video on Sunday, two days from now, and it's been a project that I've been working on. I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So stay, stick around. Um, <clears throat> the next live stream is going to be on a Thursday. Um, Thursday, the 20th. 
Thursday the 28th at 5 p.m., which is reading and comparing, um, which is really exciting because I know that that's kind of like the next big sack that's coming. So that'll be in June. And it's also before your school, like the term finishes. I've got a few really exciting reading and comparing things coming up. Ransom Invictus, Into the Wild Tracks, 1984 Stasiland, Crucible Year of Wonders. Plenty more for you guys to really help cover your Year 12 text. <clears throat> and, um, yeah, uh, thank you so much for being here. And don't forget about the coupon that's just down below for you guys. Okay, I hope you have a lovely week. I will see you guys in two days on Sunday.